Yeah, this this field is notorious um, for changing conditions and. Like I say, we're, we're not far from the coast at all. Um, the wind can be in one direction in the morning, a different direction in the afternoon. It swirls, it moves around, so yeah, it's really key. But these two archers here know this field very well, um, and they'll know what factors to look out for, which flags are going to be important to them. They certainly do. It is time for quarterfinal number three, and it's an all Turkish lineup. On target number one, representing Turkey, Gurda Koshkun. On target number two, representing Turkey, Yasemin Anagos. Judge of this match is Chaba Paul. Target one shoots first. Yata Bashala. So here we go. Target number one uh, sees uh, Gunal Koskin of Turkey, 21 years old, ranked uh, 34th in the world. She'll shoot first and she's up against. A higher ranked teammate on number 15, yes, I mean Anagosh, who's just a year older at 22. And what I can tell you about this is uh, not only do we know that Turkey will uh, have definitely confirmed a place because these two will face each other and one of them will go through to the semi finals, we have been told that this is a straight shoot off for that Olympic berth. And it will be Gulnal Koskun who will shoot first. Six. Perhaps a little quick from Koskin in the first arrow. Yeah, she just didn't look too happy, too confident with that, did she? So she just got to settle down here and you know fight those nerves. Of course, she's going to be nervous. This is uh, the pinnacle of archery, the place where you want to get to the Olympic Games. So. You know, it's natural to be nervous. Quick shooting from uh, Yasmin Anagosh. Ten. I haven't had the okay, best right. tournament here in Antalya on home soil. And let's not forget, we can't really judge these athletes. We've only really seen them over the last six to eight weeks after the 14, 15 month Ten. hiatus. A good finish from Koskin, but a 23 surely isn't enough for uh, to take any points in this set oh, well, finishes with a six from Anagosh but uh, gets a 24 just enough to steal the set points not overly convincing from either Archer so no it's not going to help your confidence a six there is your last arrow either so she didn't need that she uh, she wanted to keep the confidence up keep them in the middle it's going to just cast a little doubt on her mind maybe with uh, how she's shooting right now but you know, lots of deep breaths from both of them, just trying to calm those nerves, just shoot them, you know, the way that they do normally. Yeah, contrasting from uh, Gunas Koskin, who shot a 10 to finish, a very solid arrow, a final arrow, uh, but didn't get the set points. Just narrowly missed out on the set points. You can, you can see the archers chatting away there with the coaches. You know, the coach behind you is really important. What you're talking about now, you know, that can really affect your performance. So, you know, hopefully they've worked with these coaches a lot, the two of them. Sometimes it's interesting when a team comes out against each other, you might not get the coach that you normally work with. You know? I was just about to say <laughs> yeah. that, but here it's so important because Turkey have said, you have to win this now. And it's between the two of you, whoever wins it is going to the Olympics. Yeah, so you can see that coach on the left there has got probably a notepad or something there for you, just noting down where the arrows are falling as well. So that's good information they can give back to the archer. They can't always see exactly where the arrows are going. So they pl often the coach behind will plot them and give them an idea of the general you know, group is going high or slightly low left or whatever. So just to give them that help as well. Yeah, shooting 70 metres, I can tell you, I struggle to see the arrows down in the, the target face. The archers are thinking about all sorts of other things, including, you know, what they might have on the in-flight meal to Tokyo. But I imagine trying to see where the arrows are pattern is is going to be difficult. Koskin trailing, and it goes high into the eight ring there. Anagosh 
looking well she's certainly putting a good mask on here she looks relatively relaxed you can see her olympic rings on her forearm there Nine. many archers do that once they've attended an olympics that badge of honor tattooed onto them yeah they're just 22 already have one in the bag it's not bad Nine. Longer hold, see a little bit of movement at the bow. Nine. Probably good enough to keep it in the gold. Koska needs a good arrow here. I suggested 10 is going to be the bare minimum she's going to require to put Anna Kosh under pressure. Seven. That is not what she was looking for. A 24 to finish, so it's a really massive opportunity now for Anna Kosh. Just composing herself there before a setup. Yeah, she was really taking a bit of time. Sometimes archers let the clock run down, puts a bit of pressure on them to shoot the arrow. 26 is enough. A better final arrow from Anagosh. Scores not startling, you have to say, but all importantly, Anagosh, well certainly from her side of the shooting line, is four set points to nil up. I'm still not 100% convinced by her at the moment. World number 15 is usually a little bit more composed and shoots some higher scores. Something special about this match, isn't there? There's so much on the line here. You know, this is your Olympic quota spot that you know that doesn't really get more pressure than this. And I just wonder how many times these two archers have shot against each other, how well they know each other. You know, they probably know who's who really is the better archer um, between the two of them, and who's on form right now. They probably know how they've shot, you know, through the last few weeks together. And I think that's an interesting dynamic as well. And you've got to put all of that out of your mind. You've just got to focus on yourself here, being the present be in this this arrow that you're shooting right now you know the sets that have gone before don't matter you know it's four nil but um, anything can happen you can come back you can come back and win so you know this set is vital certainly is uh, yes I mean, and I got four set points to nil up here in quarterfinal number three of this continental qualification tournament it's an all-turkish affair and again it will be Gulnaz Koskun who will shoot first There was a huge deep breath of composure and it definitely worked. Another long hold. Slight movement just before the shot went. I wonder if that's why. Just pushed it out into the eight. You can see the clicker there, the blade at the end, the bright red plastic on the clicker. Nine. Much better. Really keeping herself in the match now. She's got to get some points on the board. You know, she doesn't want to lose six now. Ten. Good recovery arrow there from uh, Anagosh. So, Anagosh needs a 10 here to draw level on s the points here in this set. Gone high and into the 8, so a 26 again from Anagosh, up against a 28 from Koskun, and Koskun is on the board, 4-2. Isn't it interesting that every quarterfinal, one of the archers has gone 4-0 up, and then the, archer, the other archer has pegged them back in all of the, or both of the quarterfinals we've had already. Yeah, I think sometimes you can get to 4-0 and 
I think that archer then can just see the finish line almost, and sometimes that's you know, detrimental, obviously. But you know, it's really important the archer stays in the present. They're not thinking about the future, not thinking about winning the match or what's going to happen next. Um, they've just got to stay with that, that moment they're in. So, yeah, we can't often see 4-0 up and then they lose the next one. But also, I suppose, it's a law of averages. Um, how many can you win in a row? Yeah, it's, it's interesting that we haven't seen... Um, that level of consistency. Uh, uh, interesting, not surprising, because of the pressure, the added pressure of this particular tournament. And as I said, it's tied in with the European Championships, and Turkey really haven't done that well in that competition. More of that coming later on this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, as always. But today is all about qualification for the Tokyo Olympic Games, and Gulnaz Koskun has got herself back into this match against her teammate. Nine. Really quick shooting from Yasmin, so that can sometimes put the pressure back on the uh, opponent as well because you only get 20 seconds per arrow, so if you shoot very quickly, you know, your opponent then has to shoot again without much of a rest. Nine. Side grouping from Koskun. So all square, deep breath from Koskun. She wants the 10 to put all the pressure on Anagosh. A nine, a 27, and actually that is more than Anagosh has scored in any of the previous sets. But a 10 here will not only take her to the win in this match, but it will also book her a place on the shooting line in Tokyo. Oh, she's got over into the eight by the looks of things. Uh, it's going for a measure. This is a critical measure as well. At the moment, the points for that set go to Koskun, uh, but if that eight is marked up to a nine, we'll all be square on points in this set, and it will be uh, five two rather sorry five three rather than four four that's right yeah that last arrow i think you just see a little bit of um what i'd call a little bit of soft arrow so instead of keeping the pressure on and seeing that beautiful follow through there's a slight movement again where the arm sort of went inward almost so that sort of pushed it over to the right you might be able to see it on the replay it's going to be crucial to see what it is and has to win the next set to force Yasmin Anagos to a shoot-off. A tight score in the next set is enough for Yasmin to win the match. So, it sounds from the stadium announcer that the points were shared and Anagos's arrow was marked up. So, if when we get the score captioned back up, we'll see 5-3. It does mean Anagos just has to match Koskun in this fifth set. Right. Oh, it was a good start from Koskun, but Anagosh again shooting very quickly, Nikki. Yeah, I think those faster shots are, are much, much better. She's feeling more confident. And then resulting in better nines and tens for her. Longer hold. You just see the pressure. Still kept it in the gold though. That was really important. She had to keep the pressure there. Bit of a longer hold this time Ten. from Anagosh. Another 10. I wonder what's going through Gomez Koskun's mind here. Got to keep her composure and put some pressure on with another 10. Long, long hold, but <laughs> wow, straight in the 10. What, you know, that's, she couldn't have asked for more. That is exactly what she needed, but felt the pressure all the way through. 
Well, an eight to draw level on points and take the win. She gets a nine. Yasmin Anagosh has taken this fifth set, 29 points to 28. It was her best shooting of the entire match, winning it 7-3, but more importantly, booking her place at the Tokyo Olympic Games. It will be her second Olympic Games, having competed in Rio in 2016 at the age of just 17 years old. Finishing 17th, Anagosh has got a chance to go to Tokyo and do a little bit better. Great performance from her in the end. It wasn't convincing at the beginning, but she made it across the line. It's just such high pressure here. You know, this really is the pinnacle of the sport. To get to those games, it means everything to these archers. So the pressure and the stakes could not be higher. Um, I think that's why we're seeing some scores that are not so good, but also the win factor as well here, Turkey. Always breezy um, and a difficult field to shoot on. So, you know, she did enough to come away with the win. She certainly did. And as we understand it, the Turkish Federation said that, that was the straight shoot off for the women's spot of course paris coming up uh, in a couple of weeks time is the final opportunity for teams to qualify for the olympic games and turkey yet to qualify a women's team uh, surprisingly given their recent form uh, and when i say recent i of course mean pre-pandemic they've come back out and here on home soil haven't really performed up to the standards we're used to but they're certainly going to have one female archer in the games in Tokyo uh, in what, just a little under 50 days time. So we've uh, kept things fairly simple here in terms of Olympic qualification. Uh, first quarterfinal won by Elia Kanaya.